Okay, so we left off last time. We were talking about areas. We were talking about putting together different components of areas um, to calculate, you know, the composite figures. So if we look at something like this. Assume that what we have there is a quarter circle. As horrible as my artwork is. Let's say that is 32 feet there, 28 feet here, and let's call this 20 feet. First of all, if I go to find the area of this, Am I going to be able to break it down and add the pieces up? Or will I have to go to a larger shape and subtract out? I'm going to have to subtract. Because there's only one way that we can calculate pieces of a circle. We can't do the, the outside of a circle. We can only do the inside of a circle. So this piece here, this quarter circle, is missing. So we are going to have to find the larger shape, the big rectangle, and then subtract out that quarter circle. What two dimensions are we going to use for the larger rectangle? Perfect, 28 by 32, which gives us 896 square feet. I try to avoid using it in class, by the way, but a symbol you might see every now and then looks like that. It's just the foot symbol with a square around it. It stands for square feet. If you got one like this, it's the inch symbol with the square around it, that would be square inches. I try to avoid using it in this class, but if you ever deal with architects or structural engineers, that it's a common symbol that gets used. So anyway, the whole big rectangle is 896 square feet. So now we have to find the area of this quarter circle and subtract it. Well, to find a quarter circle, we have to find the area of the whole circle and then just divide it by 4. So the area of that whole circle is going to be pi times radius squared. What's its radius going to be? Well, if that's 28 all the way up, and this is only 20, this piece has to be 8 feet. So the area is going to be pi times 8 squared. But again, that's the whole circle. So to get just our quarter circle, we either do times 1 fourth or divided by 4. So that ends up being 50.24 square feet. So we subtract. So that's going to give us 845.76 square feet is our area. So we've gone through pretty much everything we can on flat objects. One of our next steps is to look at three-dimensional objects. Like a box. and find something called surface area. Surface area is just the area of the whole outside surface of the object. And something like this on a box, it's really easy. The surface is made up of six rectangles. So if I give you some dimensions here, let's say I tell you that this is 12 inches by 10 inches by 8 inches. We have a rectangle on bottom here that is how big? 12 inches by 10 inches. So it's 120 square inches. 
Now we have another rectangle that is identical to that. The top one up here is also 120 square inches. So I don't have to multiply it out again. I'll just write it down again. <clears throat> Next, we have the end over here. That's going to be 10 inches by, that will be my height of 8 inches. So 10 inches by 8 inches is going to give us 80 square inches. Just like the bottom and the top, the other end is that same size as that rectangle. That's another 80 square inches. There are two more rectangles left, one of them being the front. That one is... 8 by 12, pretty simple. For 96 square inches. And again, just like all the others, it comes in pairs. The back is the same size. So another 96 square inches. <clears throat> so if I add that all up, I get what? 592 square inches? That would be my surface area of that box. Now, working with the box, we're going to try to find some ways to simplify this process of surface area. Because there are a lot of things that happen here that get repeated over and over in some of, them are more, some of our more complicated shapes. First thing I want to look at is something called the base of a box. In a box, a base is a little more vague because pretty much any one of the surfaces could be a base. But a base is the shape that creates the solid. The solid is just the whole big three-dimensional object here that we have. That's our technical term for a, the solid is the technical term for a three-dimensional object. The shape that creates the solid, what that means is, if I take a shape and I can actually slide it through the whole solid, or if I cut that object, cut through that object in any place, it's still going to have that same shape. Now the thing with a box is, any one of the surfaces, as I said, could be the base. I could use the bottom as a base. Well, that bottom, as you can see, you can slide right up through the whole object and create the whole object. I could use this end over here. Well, as you can see on the box, that end could slide through the object and be used to, to create as a basis for the object. Or it could be the front. So on a box like this, the base isn't really critical. I can pick any one of the faces to be the base. So typically, if we have that option, we will choose the bottom to be the base. Just because when we're dealing with a box like this, the bottom generally is the base for other purposes rather than just the mathematical side of things. If I have a different shaped object, Like this, now the now it's not possible for each side to be the base. There is one set of bases on here. This shape here is the shape that I can take and move through the whole object. That is the base. That's the shape that that object is based off of. It was used to create that object. Or if I cut that object at any point, I'm still going to have that same shape as where it's going to be cut. I can't take the front, that, rect that rectangle, and pull it through, or any of the other rectangles on the sides and pull it through. Now you notice every object has two bases. 
or at least all these do, because the bottom is the same as the top. So both of those are bases. The same here. If I'm going to use the bottom as a base, the top is also considered a base for that object. Wanted to find something called lateral sides. Lateral sides are the sides that connect the bases. So on these objects here, and lat those lateral sides are almost always, when we're dealing with a full solid like this, are pretty much always rectangles. For what we're going to do for the next several days, they're all going to be rectangles. So the lateral sides here, for this box, since the top is also a base, the lateral sides of this would be the rectangle on front, the rectangle on the end, the rectangle on back, and the rectangle on the other end. For this triangular solid down here, you have the rectangle on the front, on this side, and over here. So they are all rectangles. It's important. The lateral area is important in application for a few reasons. One is for you guys especially. Let's say you're looking at a, a bedroom. And you want to finish the walls. Usually you separate, let's say we're going to do sheetrock. You'll separate the walls from the ceiling because the ceiling usually uses a 5-8 sheetrock and your walls will use either a half inch or 9-16 sheetrock. So if you want to figure out how much area you have to cover for the walls, what you're looking at is simply the lateral surfaces. So if you have a bedroom that is 10 feet by 14 feet with an 8 foot ceiling. And you want to know what is the area of the walls. What, how much area do you have to cover in sheetrock? Or later on, how much area are you going to have to paint? What you're talking about is the area of the lateral surfaces, or what is often referred to as just the lateral area. <coughs> so let's kind of sketch out that room. So there's that room. It is 10 feet by 14 feet with an 8 foot ceiling, 8 foot high walls. The lateral area that I could find each of those four rectangles by themselves and add them together, but there's a simpler way I can do it. If I just slice down one corner of that room and fold all the walls out flat, the first wall, of course they're all going to be 8 feet tall, the first wall here is going to be 10 feet. The next wall is going to be 14 feet. Then another 10 feet. And another 14 feet. What I get if I just fold all those walls right out is one big long rectangle. The height of that rectangle is still the height of the original box, the original room in this case. The length of the rectangle right here is found by adding up those pieces, 10, 14, 10, and 14. If you look at our original room here, original box, 10 feet, 14 feet, 10 feet, and 14 feet, that distance is just the perimeter of the base. The symbol we're going to use for that is perimeter, P for perimeter, with a little B for base there. So this dimension here is just the perimeter of the base. So the amount of our lateral area the size of the lateral area is just going to be the perimeter of the base times the height of that object. So for this room 
the perimeter of our base be 10 feet plus 14 feet plus 10 feet plus 14 feet. Did anybody beat me to it? 48 feet is the perimeter of our base. So then the lateral area, the area of our lateral surfaces, is that perimeter of the base, 48 feet, times our 8 feet of height, which is 384 square feet. So 384 square feet is the wall area or lateral area of that room. <clears throat> so we can use that to define surface area. Surface area of an object, the area of the bases, A with the B, plus the lateral area, LA for lateral area. So let's look at another object and find its full surface area. So we had this one that looked kind of like this. I'll draw it like this. And I'm going to make this a right triangle, just to make it easier on us. And we'll say this is 5 feet, 12 feet. And this height here, we're going to make 15 feet. So if I want to find the surface area, I have to find two pieces. As you can see, I need the area of the base. Well, the base here is that rectangle, or that triangle, I should say, on the bottom, because that is the shape that defines the whole object. I can slide that up through. If I cut that off at any point, that's going to be that triangular shape. So the area of that triangle is going to be the 12 feet times the 5 feet divided by 2 because it's a triangle. 12 times 5 would be the related rectangle. Divided by 2 makes the triangle. That is going to be 30 square feet. That's the area of our base. Why am I writing it down a second time? Because the top is also the base and it will have the same area. Good. Next, I need to find the lateral area. To find the lateral area, I first need to know the perimeter of the base. The perimeter of the base is found by adding up the sides. I have 5 feet plus 12 feet, but I am missing that third side. From what we know how to do, how do we find that third side? The third side is the hypotenuse of a triangle. We'll call that, of a right triangle, we'll call that side C. The legs are sides A and B. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So we are going to take... 5 squared is 25. 12 squared is 144. Equals C squared. 25 plus 144 is 169. Equals C squared. Then what do we have to do? Square root it. Very good. 13 equals C. So this side up here is 13 feet. So that means in our perimeter we need to add 13 feet more. So 5 plus 12 plus 13 is 30 feet is the perimeter of our base. To finish the lateral area then, we take the perimeter of our base, the 30 feet, times what? The height of 15 feet. Remember the reason for that is what we've done is we've taken these sides here and we have folded them out. Make one big rectangle. 
It is 15 feet tall. The first piece is five feet long. That's just this side. The second piece is 12 feet long. That's this side. And the third piece is the 13 feet on the other side. So what we've done here to find the lateral area is made this one big rectangle that is 30 feet, the perimeter of the base, by the height of 15 feet. So we multiply that out. 30 times 15 is 450 square feet. We add that up. That makes 510 square feet. That is our surface area of that object. Any questions? So on this object here, the base is not on bottom. For this object, the base is actually this front piece right here. The reason for it is because that is the shape that if I cut this, I'm always going to end up with that same shape. Another term, an engineering term for it is what we call the cross section of the shape. No matter where you cut it, you're going to get that shape. Also, you can think of it this way. I can take that triangle and I can slide it through the whole object like that. It's the shape that was used to create this object. So our first thing we're going to do here is find the area of the base. How do I find the area of the base for this? Eight inches. Times what? 15 inches, and I still have one more thing to do yet. Divide by 2 because it's a triangle, right? You had it there. I just cut you off. Sorry about that. So 8 inches times 15 inches divided by 2, 60 square inches. That's the area of my base. Does this one have a second base? Yeah, it sure does. It's on the back there. That's another 60 square inches. Now I need to find lateral area. And for the lateral area, I need to find the perimeter of the base. So here's my base. Do I have all sides of the perimeter? Well, in this case, I do. So 8 inches plus 15 inches plus 17 inches adds up to 40 inches is the perimeter of my base. So to find my lateral area, what am I going to do to that 40 inches? What am I going to multiply it by? Careful. The lateral area is this rectangle here, the rectangle on bottom, and this rectangle here. I'm folding them out and standing them up. I'm getting this rectangle that has a piece that's 8 inches. 15 inches, and 17 inches. What's the height of it here? The 20, right? The distance between the bases is always that height. So the height of that rectangle for the lateral area is always that distance between the two bases of that figure. So I multiply those out, I get 800 inches squared, which adds up to 920 square inches for my total surface area. Any questions there? Well, this next one is one that you've probably been given special formulas for, but you really don't need it.
A cylinder. So let's say we have a cylinder that is 8 feet in diameter, 10 feet tall. What's the base of this cylinder? It's a circle. If I take that circle, I can actually slide it through the whole object. Um, that is the shape that this whole object is based off of. Oops. <coughs> the area of the base, then, is just the area of that circle. So it'll be pi times, is it going to be 8? No, what am I going to multiply pi by? Remember, for area of a circle, I use pi times radius squared. So it'll be 3.14 times 4 squared. There you go. That'll be 4 feet. So 3.14 times 4 squared is 50.24 square feet. That's the area of my base. There's a second base on top. I already have it highlighted, so I'm going to write that down twice. Now for the lateral area. I said before that the lateral area is always a rectangle. But that doesn't look like a rectangle to me. That's a continuous kind of round shape. If I look at a cylinder, well, this is approximately a cylinder if I rolled it better. If I slice that cylinder down the side and I unroll that surface, it becomes a rectangle. And the height of that rectangle is still just the height of that cylinder. The length of that rectangle is just the perimeter of that circle at the base of the, rect of the cylinder. So it's still the same rules for that lateral area. So let's find the perimeter of the base. The perimeter of the base here is the circumference of the circle. Circumference is pi times diameter. So for this one, that's going to be 3.14 times 8. So 25.12 inches is my perimeter of my base. So for lateral area, I'll take my 25.12 inches. Oops, not inches, that should be feet, sorry. Feet times my 10 feet of height gives me 251.2 square feet of lateral area. So I just add those up. 50.24 plus 50.24 plus 251.2 is 351.68 square feet. That is my total surface area. Any questions? Okay, we're going to have you guys try one here. There we go, if I can draw here. This is just a cylinder. It's laying on its side is all. Has a radius on the base of 5 inches. A distance between those circles of 20 inches. So find the total surface area for me. I'll give you a couple minutes to work. So the area of the base for this is going to be the area of a circle. So pi times radius squared. So that'll be 3.14 times. I do give you the radius of 5 here, so 5 squared. So that's 78.5 square inches. 
Is there a second base? Yes, there's on the other end. Show of hands, how many of you got the 78.5 square inches? Okay, good. That's a start. So now I need to do the lateral area. There's two things we need to know for the lateral area. One is the perimeter of the base, which we got to find yet. That's going to be multiplied by what? The distance between the bases, or the 20 inches. If it's standing up, right, if the base is on the bottom, it would be the height of the object. So let's find the perimeter of the base. The perimeter of the base is going to be just the circumference of a circle, which is pi times diameter. So 3.14 times the radius here is 5, the diameter would be 10 inches. So that is 31.4 inches. So we put that up here for the perimeter of our base. And we multiply it. 31.4 times 20 is 628 square inches. So we add that up. We've got, <clears throat> what, 785 square inches is our total surface area. Any questions? Okay, let's try one a little bit different. So for this one, let's say we have a triangle up here that is six inches on this side, seven inches on that side, and nine inches on this side, so nine inches here. The height of this is going to be 10 inches. Finding the surface area of this, I need to find the area of the base. The base of this, of course, is the triangle. That triangle has sides of 9, 7, and 6. How do I, of course, if it were a right triangle, the right angle would be here. How do I check to see if it's a right angle, a right triangle? Well, I would treat the two shorter sides as legs because the two shorter sides would have to make the right angle. The longer side would be a hypotenuse. So I'm going to label them A, B, and C, and we're going to check to see if it works out. Does A squared plus B squared does it equal c squared? So a is 6, that's 6 squared. b is 7, so that'll be 7 squared. c is 9, so that'll be 9 squared. 6 squared is 36. 7 squared is 49. That adds up to 85. 9 squared is 81. Those two are not equal. So this is not a right triangle. So how on earth can we find the area of that if it's not a right triangle? Unless we're given an altitude on it, but we're not given that either. Well, there is a formula called, sometimes called Hero's formula or Huron's formula. It was invented by a Greek mathematician named Huron. And what Huron found is if I take a triangle, that even if it's not a right triangle, and I first find the perimeter of that triangle. So the perimeter of this triangle is 9 inches plus 7 inches plus 6 inches. It takes 22 inches. So there's my perimeter. Huron defines something called the semi-perimeter, S. That's just the perimeter divided by 2. 
So 22 inches divided by 2 is 11 inches for a semi-perimeter. Now we're still going to leave the sides labeled A, B, and C because Huron found that the area of a triangle can be found by taking the square root of S, that semi-perimeter, times that semi-perimeter minus the length of side A, times that semi-perimeter minus the length of side B, times that semi-perimeter minus the length of side C. Let's put the numbers in here. So my semi-perimeter is 11. Next would be 11 minus A, so 11 minus 6, because side A is 6 units, times 11 minus B is 7 units, times 11 minus C is 9 units. So that's 11 times 11 minus 6 is 5, times 11 minus 7 is 4, times 11 minus 9 is 2. So square root of 11 times 5 times 4 times 2. 20.976. That is square inches. That is the area of that triangle. Now since that triangle is the base of this figure, that 20.976 is the area of my base. And even though that was a long process, there is another one on top. So 20.976 inches squared goes on twice. Now we need the lateral area. Well, since we use Huron's formula, the lateral area, we already know the, the perimeter of the base. We had to find it. It's 22 inches. Times that height of 10 inches is going to be 200 inches squared for our lateral area. So if we add that up, we got 241.952 inches squared. That is our surface area. Well, let's take a look at this Huron's formula a little bit more without having to do the whole surface area. So if we just have a rectangle, or sorry, triangle, where we don't have any right angles, but we do know all three sides. Let's say we got 8 feet, 13 feet, and 15 feet. So finding the area involves a few steps. Step one is find the perimeter. So 15 feet plus 13 feet plus 8 feet adds up to 26, no, 36 feet, right? As the perimeter perimeter of that triangle. The next thing I have to do, find the semi-perimeter. How do I find the semi-perimeter? Perfect. The perimeter divided by 2. 36 feet divided by 2 is 18 feet. That's my semi-perimeter. Now this next part is the part that you may want to write down, this is the part that's hard to memorize. Um, it is in a packet that I gave to Mr. Berghammer that he'll probably be giving you next week or the week after. Did he give you, did Mr. Berghammer give you a big packet yet? No. No? Okay. He'll be getting that to you probably right after Thanksgiving. But the area is then given by the formula of the square root of the semi-perimeter S times S minus the length of side A times S minus the length of side B, times S minus the length of side C. So that's 
So we'll have to fill this in. S is 18. S will be 18 minus side A is 8. I'm just going to call it A, B, C. S is 18 again minus side B is 13. And S is 18 again minus side C, which will be 15. So we've got 18 times 18 minus 8 is 10. Times 18 minus 13 is 5. Times 18 minus 15 is 3. So I'm just going to go to the calculator to do that square root of 18 times 10 times 5 times 3. 51.962. Those are all in feet, so this is square feet. There is the area of my triangle. In your notes. Use Hero's formula to find the area of that triangle for me. Talk about it. To make sure you're on the right track, what'd you get for the perimeter? Perfect. Nine, nine plus 40 plus 41 does give you 90 inches. Okay. So let you guys keep going from there. Perimeter. Our semi-perimeter is going to be the 90 inches divided by 2, or 45 inches. So now we've got to put this in our formula for our area. 45 times 45 minus 9. I always label them A, B, and C, smallest to largest, just out of habit. 45 minus 40. 45 minus 41. By the way, how many of you got 180 square inches for this? Perfect. So this will be the square root of 45 times 36 times 5 times 4. Which does work out to be 180 inches squared. The reason that came out to be an even a whole number like that instead of a decimal you double check it this is the right angle here that's the right triangle okay So what if we have a shape a little awkward? Like this. Well, this one's a little hard to draw in your notes. And let's say that this shape is 8 feet here, 10 feet here, and 14 feet here. And I want to find the surface area. Well, I can find area of the base, I can find perimeter of the base, and I can use that to find lateral area. So even though this is kind of an ugly looking complex shape, nothing different than what we've done before. Just going to be a few more steps. So for the area of my base, my base here is made up of two pieces. I have this rectangle here and that half circle. So for the rectangle, 
which is 14 feet by 10 feet or 140 square feet. For the circular portion, what is my radius of my circle? Half of my, oops, not size, half of my eight, so it'll be four feet. So that area is pi, I should put in 3.14 times the four, the radius of four squared, it's a half circle, so I divide by two. So that is going to give me 25.12 square feet for the half circle. So the area of my base is 165.12 square feet. There is another base that's the same size on top, so it's another 165.12. The lateral area is going to be, again, the perimeter of the base times that height of 10 feet. That perimeter of the base, I can still, even though it's a weird shape for the base, I can still fold out that whole lateral area and make a big rectangle as a length that is equal to the perimeter of that base. So I'm going to find the perimeter of the base. I have 14 here, plus 8 feet here, plus 14 feet there, plus this half circle. That half circle is found by taking pi times my diameter, which is the full 8 feet, divided by 2 because it's a half a circle. That's 12.56 feet. So if I look at that, I have what? 48.56 feet is my perimeter of my base. So I put that up here. For my lateral area, 48.56 times 10 is 485.6 square feet for my lateral area. So I add that all up and I get 815.84 square feet is my total surface area. So even a shape like that that looks pretty complex, pretty intimidating, it isn't that bad to find as long as we keep in mind area of the base, or bases plus lateral area. Our next step then is to do volume. We've talked about volume a little bit. Volume, you know, just like we found a length by taking that point and moving it through, through space and the distance we moved became its length. And we made an area by taking that length and moving it through space. And that length then, or the length times this new distance, which we call the width, that we moved it created an area. Well, if we take that area... And we pull that through space, it creates these three-dimensional objects we've been talking about, and that defines a volume. A volume can be defined as the area of a base times a height. That height is just the distance between bases. So if we look at a simple box, Like this. And let's say that, that box is 12 feet by 8 feet by 10 feet. Now, just like before with any of our other boxes with surface area, any of those rectangular sides could be the base. With the box, we tend to choose the bottom. 
So the base is the bottom. We're going to find the area of that base, just like any other rectangle, length times width. So 12 feet times 8 feet is 96 square feet. That's the area of our base. Once we've done that, the volume is really simple. Area of the base times the height. It's 96 square feet times a height of 10 feet. 96 times 10 is 960 square feet or feet squared times feet or feet cubed or cubic feet. So our volume is that quick. In fact, we put in all this effort up here to find the area of the base. The 165.12 square feet. I can now find the volume of that object really quickly. Because its volume is going to be the area of the base times its height. So it's going to be 165.12 times that height of 10, that was feet squared, times the height of 10 feet, 1,651.2 cubic feet of volume. So you can see by defining our surface area and our volume in these ways, it becomes very easy to find the two of them together. So if I have this shape again, let me put some new dimensions on it here. So it's 10 inches, 24 inches, and 26 inches. We'll call this 50 inches. <coughs> Let's find the volume. Remember the volume, just like with surface area, starts out by finding the area of the base. The base of this is just this triangle. So the area of that triangle is going to be 10 inches by 24 inches divided by 2, otherwise known as 120 inches squared. That's the area of the base. So to find the volume, area of the base, 120 inches squared times what? What's the distance between bases? That's my other base. Distance between them is 50 inches. So 120 times 50 is 6,000 inches cubed. That's my volume. Just for a little bit of practice. So I've got a volume of 6,000 inches cubed or cubic inches. What if I want that into cubic feet? One cubic foot, you guys remember, equals how many cubic inches? Perfect. 12 by 12 by 12 or 1,728. Good job. So the cubic inches cancel out. Since the 1728 is on bottom, it'll be 6,000 divided by 1728. So 3.47... Cubic feet is the volume of that in cubic feet. So for a cylinder, let's say that I have 20 inches across there, 
and 40 inches of height. To find the volume, I start out with, just like for surface area, no matter what I'm looking for, I have to start out with the area of the base. This is a circle, so the area of the base there is going to be pi times radius squared. So it'll be 3.14 times what? 10 squared. Perfect. So that is 314 inches squared is the area of my base. So that means my volume is 314 inches squared times 40 inches of height. So 314 times 40. Here's 12,560 inches squared times inches is inches cubed. Volume will always be units cubed. So again, if I want to convert that, 12,560 inches cubed into feet cubed, one cubic foot is 1,728. Which is cubed cancel out. So it's 1256 or 12560 divided by 1728. 7.27 cubic feet. So let's put the stuff we've learned here all together. So I'm going to take this triangle here, which is 11 inches by 40 inches by 45 inches. And let's make this. 35 inches tall, I want to find for this one the volume and surface area. Let's find the volume first. To do the volume, the first thing I need to do is the area of the base. Is this triangle a right triangle? I have 11, 40, and 45. If that were a right triangle, which two sides would have to be the legs? 11 and 40, the short one. So this would be the only angle that could be our right angle. So if we tried it out, does 11 squared plus 40 squared, will that equal 45 squared? Okay, so 11 squared is 121. 40 squared is 1,600. That adds up to 1,721. Well, 45 squared is 2,025. That's definitely not equal. So that is not a right triangle. So if it's not a right triangle, how are we going to find its area? Huron's formula. How do we start out Huron's formula? That's the first thing we need to find. We need to find the perimeter. So the perimeter there will be 11 inches plus 40 inches plus 45 inches, which adds up to how much? 96 inches, good. The next step then is the semi-perimeter, which will be 
divided by 2, good, 48 inches. So that means the area of that is the square root of 48. I'm going to label this A, B, and C still. 48 times 48 minus 11 times 48 minus 40 times 48 minus 45. So that's the square root of 48 times 7 times, so not times 7, but 48 times 37 times 8 times 3. Gives us 206.45, we're going to call it 206.46 is our area. Now remember, that is, that triangle is our base. So that is the area of our base. To find our volume, what do we need to do? Multiply that area of our base by what? By the height, yes. Here's my base, here's my other base. The distance between them is the 35. So times 35 inches. Seven, 7225.95. That'll be inches cubed. There's my volume. Not so bad. Now, I'm not going to write out the conversion, but if I did want that in cubic feet, I would divide by what? Seventeen twenty-eight. Perfect. So four point one eight cubic feet for surface area. We start out with the area of the base for surface area, just. Like we always have, same as with the volume. So 206.46, we've already found. We are writing it down twice because there is a base on top of this one as well. Now we need lateral area. To find the lateral area, remember the first step is the perimeter of the base. So that's 11 plus 40 plus 45. Now we already found that once. What is it? 96 inches. So our lateral area will be that 96 inch perimeter of the base times the height of 35. Gives us 3360 inches squared. 3360 inches squared. We add that up. We get 3772.92 square inches for surface area. What if I wanted to convert that surface area into square feet? What would I divide by? Perfect, 144, good job. So 26.20 square feet. Any questions? That kind of ties together everything that we've done. The next step will be to do something like this.
We have a trapezoidal base. And I might tell you that this is 12 inches here. I tell you this is 5 inches. I tell you that the top of this, I'm going to move this just a little bit. There. This made it a little easier to see. Let's say the top of this is 22 inches here. The bottom of that will be 36 inches here. We're going to make 36 inches. And this here, we're going to make 40 inches. I want volume and surface area. So one of the first things I'm going to have to do is to find the area of the base. The base is going to be this trapezoid here. Because that is the shape that this whole object is based off of. Now you can see I can slide that through the whole object. So to find the area of that base, since it's a trapezoid, I find the average of the bases. So 22 plus 36 divided by 2, and I multiply that average by my height of 12. So 30, 22 plus 36, make sure I hit equals before I divide by 2, is 29 times 12. 348 inches squared is the area of my base. So her volume, or the volume on this, is in 348 inches squared times my 40 inches between bases. giving me 13,920 inches cubed. Now we're not going to convert that into cubic feet because you guys know how to do it. I was just doing that to review how to do the conversion. So we have that in cubic inches. For our surface area, this one going to be a little tricky. We need the area of the base, which we already have, 348. And there is a base on the other end, so we're going to write that down twice. So now all we need is the lateral area. We can add them up. So let's find the lateral area. To find the lateral area, we need the perimeter of the base. Well, the base, the of the base is just this right here. We have the 22 and the 36, but we need this side and this side. So we'll look at this triangle right here. I pull that out. Oops, that's not what I wanted to grab. You look at what's labeled there. This would be a right angle. This is labeled 5, and this is labeled 12. So I have to find this side, which would be C, from ABC. 5 squared plus 12 squared equals C squared. Now we've seen the 5, 12 enough. What's C going to be? Did we have that memorized yet? So 5 squared is 25. 12 squared is 144. We add them to get 169, which will C squared, and we square up. So C is 13. So if we come up here, this side here is 13 inches. Now I have a similar issue over here. This is 12 inches here. But how do we know how to find this piece down here? Well, if this is 36 all the way across, 
We'll subtract 5 here and 22 here. That leaves us with 9 inches there. So that triangle is 12 inches, 9 inches. So I'll label it again, A, B, and C. So A squared will be 9 squared, plus B squared will be 12 squared, equals C squared. So 9, is eight, nine squared is 81. 12 squared is 144. Adding 81 and 144 is 225 equals C squared. And then square root of 225, C is 15. So come back up here. This is 15 inches. So the perimeter of our base was the 22 on top plus the 15 over here plus the 36 on bottom plus the 13 over here which adds up to a lot what is that 86 inches so our lateral area is that 86 inches times the distance between bases is 40. Notice that's the same thing we multiply the area of our base by to get our volume. That's what we multiply the perimeter of our base by to get our lateral area. So 86 inches times 40 inches is 3,440. Is squared is our lateral area. So we add that all up. Okay, 16, 13, 11, 4,136 square inches for our surface area. What do you guys think? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, using the lateral area is just a way of combining all of those sides at once. And in construction, there's just a lot of, of applications where you're in a room, you need to know all the walls rather than the whole surface area. So painting the walls or surfacing the walls or anything like that. Also it just, it'll, yeah. And what it does is it allows you to do, treat any solid object like that. On um, the technical term, I'm sure you would know as a prism where the base and the, the top and the bottom are the same shape and are connected with rectangles. Any prism, you can then find that surface area by doing the area of the bases plus the lateral area. So when you hit something like a cylinder, there is no special formula for that. You find the area of the circle on bottom. So let's say that's uh, 4 inches. So the area of that base is pi times 4 squared, or 50.24 square inches. There's one on bottom that's the same size. And then the lateral area is the same as what we've just been doing. You find the perimeter of the base, which is the circumference of the circle. And then you do that times that height. Exactly. And it, what it does is it also allows you to combine pretty much every shape that you could ever want to find surface area of. It follows the same process. There isn't a separate formula for each one of them. Okay, that is pretty much all I had for you guys for today. Um, I believe last time I had you look at in the little book, 
units 24 and 25. If I cut you pretty short on work time. So I'll have you guys look at those for the last 10 minutes here. How many of you guys are hunters? Ah. Well, good luck next week. Be safe. We'll see you guys in about a week and a half.